AI and machine learning jobs are at all-time hype, but does this mean this is a great job for you? There are no jobs in this job market right now. I'm so scared because like I have been unemployed for three months. Can someone please tell me where I can get a job? You've been hearing this too, right? From your friends online or maybe you're living it. Tech jobs are not hiring and entry level is supposedly dead. So then why are these jobs still everywhere? If tech is dying, why are companies throwing six figures at AI engineers? So I took a deep dive into this. I analyzed over 250 jobs, looked at salary data to understand who these jobs are really for. In a world where AI is supposedly replacing all jobs, why are AI jobs still on the rise and paying so much? And what do these people actually do? Let's unpack it. Despite all the buzz, AI isn't just hype. AI jobs are actually exploding across every major industry. According to LinkedIn, AI-related roles grew by 38% in just four years. And it's not just in tech. Healthcare is up 40% thanks to AI that's now helping doctors detect diseases faster than ever. Retail is up too at 35% as stores use AI to manage inventory and recommend products. And in finance, they're even training models to outpace human traders. In fact, some banks like JP Morgan and BlackRock are integrating Gen AI and agentic systems internally. So yeah, if it feels like every company is using and hiring for AI, it's probably because they are. But here's the interesting part. Nearly half of employers say they can't find enough qualified talent for AI roles, which sounds insane because at the same time, everyone's talking about how hard it is to find a job. One of the most challenging job markets in years. Artificial intelligence will lead to a reduction of its corporate workforce. A white collar bloodbath. So what's really going on here? Is AI a good field to get into or not? Before we answer that question, let's first look at the trends. Why is there a sudden spike in AI jobs? First factor is the cloud platforms. 94% of all companies are using cloud services. I'm actually surprised that 6% of companies are not using cloud services. I don't know what they do, but basically most companies are using cloud services because they can easily access them. There are AI tools like AWS SageMaker and Google's Vertex AI. So they don't need to set up a full research lab or have custom infrastructure anymore. Next factor is Gen AI. ChatGPT launched in November 22 and reached 100 million users in under two months. This makes them the fastest growing consumer internet application in history. That growth also sparked hiring waves. By 2024, AI job postings on LinkedIn jumped by 38%, reflecting the boom in demand for Gen AI tools like ChatGPT. And behind the scenes is a wave of new funding from investors who also wanted a piece of the pie. Global AI R&D investment reached $252 billion in 2024, with private investments climbing by 44%. With all that money pouring in, salaries followed. The median AI engineer salary is around 160K a year, but that's just the median. At the top is a totally new level. When I checked, the highest reported AI engineer salary on levels at FYI was at Google, with a total compensation of 670K. That is 265K in base, 350 in stock, and a bonus of 55K. But it's not just Google, other companies like Meta and JP Morgan are also dropping six figures on AI engineers. And it's even crazier for machine learning engineers. The median total compensation for an ML engineer is 250K. At the top end, the numbers are pretty wild. Cruise, a self-driving car company, offers highest pay of $1.97 million. That is with a base of 365 k but with the stock package of $1.5 million. And these are just the ones that were reported on levels at FYI. At the extreme end, there are top-tier experts like Luo Ming Peng, who reportedly received an offer package worth $200 million. I made a video last week about how crazy the AI talent market has been lately, but there is a catch to all of this high pay. These AI jobs, they are not for beginners. They're not for entry level, but they're for people who already have experience working in AI and shipping AI products. So let's break down what companies are actually looking for when they're hiring. We're going to look at it role by role, but before we dive into what an AI engineer actually does, we need to take a step back because 
to understand the role, you first need to understand what all these terms actually mean. So artificial intelligence or AI is all about getting computers to make decisions by recognizing patterns in data. If you've been using tools like ChatGPT or Vive Coding, you're probably ahead of most people. And even today, you probably used your face ID to unlock your phone or listen to your favorite playlist on Spotify. These are all examples of AI and you've probably been using them. But AI doesn't work without fuel and that fuel Fuel is data. Data isn't just number. It's everything from images, audios, or even the timestamp on this video. Those are all different types of data. But not all data is created equal because more data is not necessarily better. Having bad data can really hurt you. It's kind of like fueling your Porsche with soda. It can break the system. Now where things get a little bit slippery is when we start talking about machine learning and data science. People often use them interchangeably, but they're not the same. Machine learning or ML is a subfield of AI. It's about teaching systems to learn from data and improve on their own. For example, YouTube learns what type of videos you might be interested in and serves them in real time. And that's probably how you found this video. And by the way, you should probably hit that like button so YouTube knows to show you more videos like this. And it will also help other people discover videos like this. Now, if you hit that like button, let's talk about data science. Data science is all about using data to explain, predict, and guide decisions. Let's say there's a travel company. They notice that the ads are underperforming. So data scientists might dig in, spot the trends, and recommend reallocating sales teams to focus on travel clients. The results here might be a slide deck or report. And in practice, companies mostly use both machine learning to build the tools and data science to figure out why performance is up or down and make decisions. And as these fields continue to evolve, so does the work itself. With the rise of pre-trained models and accessible AI tools, what individual engineers are responsible for is changing fast. It used to take teams of PhDs to build these products, data engineers to clean the data, machine learning engineers to train the model, researchers to fine tune it, test it, retrain it, and you would do this over and over and over. Today, a single AI engineer can accomplish what used to take an entire team. This is thanks to pre-trained models and APIs. It's kind of like how web development has changed. A front-end engineer used to have to hand code every element on the website line by line. Now, even beginners can launch a full app or website using no code or vibe coding. And that's sort of the shift. And these changes in tooling is partly why the jobs are changing so fast. So let's take a closer look at what these engineers actually do. Starting with the machine learning engineer. These are the folks building traditional machine learning systems. Now I want to take a look at a real world example from Stripe. This is a company that uses machine learning across almost everything like fraud detection or payment optimization. This Stripe job post lists responsibilities like design state-of-the-art ML models and large-scale ML systems and experiment and iterate on ML models using tools like PyTorch, TensorFlow, and XGBoost. You'll also see key skills like Spark, Deep Neural Networks, Java or Ruby for infrastructure work. Okay, so we looked at one job posting, but how common are these skills across the industry? To find out, I reviewed 31 new machine learning job postings from just past week, because again, these tools change so rapidly. Now, number one keyword asked by 66% of job posts were Python and PyTorch, followed by number three, TensorFlow. We saw Spark earlier in the job description. This was further down on the ranking at number 11. Now, if you're watching this video thinking, how do I actually build these skills to land one of these jobs? Well, that's exactly why I partner with Zero to Mastery. Zero to Mastery focuses on hands-on learning where you build real-world skills in AI and machine learning project by project. This is one of the best ways to learn because you're applying what you're learning in real time. For example, in the TensorFlow course, you're going to build an NLP model that breaks down complex research abstracts into simple summaries. Or in Python course, a tool that scrapes top hacker news articles, I could probably use something like this myself. And if you're the kind of person who likes roadmaps, they got a full career path, like a complete AI and machine learning engineer roadmap. And don't worry, these courses are great for any skill level, 
even if you've never written a line of code before. But what really sets them apart is the community. When you join, you get exclusive access to a community of over 500,000 students and experts learning together, answering each other's questions, and helping you move faster, especially when you get stuck. This will save you hundreds of hours Googling and watching random YouTube tutorials and trying to piece it all together on your own. The community aspect is one of my favorite things about Zero to Mastery. You get the structure and the support. So whether you're just starting out or looking to level up, check out the link in the description. And now let's get back to the video. We just saw what an ML engineer does. So how does that compare to what an AI engineer does? What's the difference between the two? Let's break it down. Here's another job posting I found from AI Fund, which is a 370 million venture studio founded by Andrew Ng. They are looking for strong foundation in full stack software development and proven hands-on experience working with large language models and Gen AI technologies. Practical software engineering skills with deep curiosity and fluency in modern AI workflows. Design, develop, and maintain both front-end and back-end components of Gen AI-powered applications. Do you notice the difference? So these guys are not building the model itself. You're building the application that's powered by the model. Key skills are a blend of AI and software engineering. They ask for experience in tools like Cursor, Windsurf, and major LLM platforms. They also ask for experience in languages like JavaScript, HTML, CSS, React, Vue, or Angular, Python, SQL, and experience in cloud platforms. Now that might sound like a lot, but that's like the key difference, right? Like AI engineers are usually more experienced in a wide variety of skills, more than ML engineers who are more specifically experts in machine learning. I also analyzed 29 other AI engineering jobs and the top skills were Python and machine learning found in 66% of job postings, followed by LLMs and cloud platforms. And here's the important part. This role did not list a required degree. Compared to the earlier role at Stripe, which required a master's or PhD. Now I pay for the LinkedIn premium account so I can see exactly how competitive it is. 287 candidates have clicked apply. Among them, 73% have a master's degree of some sort and 19% have a PhD. Now going back to the AI fund role, 361 applications have been received and it's still very competitive because 81% had master's degree, but only 5% had PhD. So this is much lower than the other role. This means that if you don't have a PhD, it's going to be much harder for you to land a machine learning engineering role whereas it's gonna be a little bit easier for you to land an AI engineering role, just statistically speaking. And another good news is that since mid-2023, the demand for AI engineers have officially surpassed machine learning engineers. So ML roles have started to level off. They're not growing so much anymore, but the AI roles have been exploding. And why is that? Because companies are racing to turn AI breakthrough into real products. And with tools like Cursor and Langchain, building with LLM is so much easier than before. So this probably means that we are probably going to need a lot more AI engineers than ML engineers because companies want to make money making these AI products. But let's be real, neither of these jobs are easy to break into. And that is why I wanna compare it to something else that people ask about all the time, data roles. Let's see how data roles stack up to AI and machine learning. There are actually three main types of data roles, data engineers, data scientists, and data analysts. Now this video is getting too long, so if you want a deeper breakdown of how they're different, I wrote a full blog post on it, so you can go check it out on my website, exaltitude.io. I'll leave the link in the description. And by the way, you should probably subscribe to my newsletter. This is where I share the deep dives and behind the scenes insights that I can't really cover in the video. So for this video, we're going to focus specifically on data scientists. So here's a real job posting. It's from BetterHelp, the online therapy platform. You'll see it's listed under job right, 
but that's just the hosting platform for the jobs. This role is an entry-level data scientist and the responsibilities are pretty representative of what you'll see across the industry. Get insights from enormous amount of data. Partner with product team. Define metrics, evaluate performance, and support data-informed decision-making. Monitor key business and product metrics share actionable insights and help drive strategy and prioritization, which honestly kind of sums up the job perfectly is everything we just talked about, right? And the bar for entry is much friendlier than machine learning or AI roles. This posting asks for only one plus year of experience in data science role or even relevant internships. The skill set they ask for is SQL, data analysis, and statistical methods. I also reviewed 20 more data scientist job postings and nearly all of them listed Python. SQL was right behind and basic machine learning was often expected to. This job was posted just six hours before the time of filming. So the application pool is much smaller, but from the first 48 people who applied, 17% only had a bachelor's degree which is the first time we even see bachelor's degree across all the roles for this video. And the median salary for data scientists is pretty high, $169,000. It's actually even higher than the 160 k that we saw for AI engineers. So which path should you choose? Well, that kind of depends on what you'd like to do and where you're at in life. If you have the luxury to choose, you can go for AI engineering if you love building and shipping fast pick machine learning engineering if you're into deep dives, modeling, and optimization, and consider data science if you're curious about uncovering insights and guiding business decisions. But let's be real, if you're trying to just get your foot in the door, the best role is the one you can land. Data roles tend to be a little bit more entry-level friendly than machine learning or AI, and analyst positions are even more accessible with even less technical skills required. But the trade-off is that they often attract more competition because more people can apply. But what does matter most is getting started. And remember, none of these paths are fixed I've seen machine learning engineers become product managers and data scientists pivot into AI engineering. And because these fields are moving so fast, it is often common to move between them. If you want some help getting started with your learning journey so you can get ready for these jobs, check out this video and I'll see you there.